Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Since it's five o'clock, we're gonna get right into it. Okay, thank you for joining us tonight, and we're going to talk about how we can prepare a mass competition called Mass Can Group. Okay, I think some of you already met me several times in the webinar. Uh, my name is Candy. I'm one of the teachers at Think Academy. So I come in contact with the Mass Kangaroo exam a while back while I was teaching the Mass Kangaroo level one and level two. And with this particular competition, actually it's super, super fun and I met a really great group of kids and that really trigger your imagination as well as testing your math skill. So why is the mass kangaroo super, super popular? And as for here, it is the most popular exam, particularly for lower grade students. You might heard of all the other mass exams such as AMC 8, AMC 10, IMO, and etc. But they're all aiming for more, much more higher grade students, such as starting from 5th grader, 6th grader, and above. But Mass Kangaroo is one of the few exams that are opening to lower kids and starting from grade 1 all the way to grade 12. And in particularly, in the past years, we had over 35,000 of participants. This is an international competition, okay? So you might have a lot of participants that's coming from internationally and maybe Pakistan, so all the other uh, great countries and as well as uh, globally. So in the past years, we had, uh, particularly in 2020, we had over 35,000 participants globally. And just in the U.S. and California, we had over 12,000 participants. As you can see, that's like over 30% of the participants that's coming from California. And so you can see, this is a very popular exam here. And you can also see that within the states of California, particularly fitting with the lower school, uh, level one, level two, all the way to level six, we have much more participants compared to the higher level. It is because uh, with your grades and when all the kids are growing older, and then you might have moving on to other um, exams as well or other competitions. A little fun fact about Mass Kangaroo is that it always held in the third weekends in March. So it is once a year and on the third weekend in March. So 2020, because of COVID-19, um, the Mass Kangaroo moved their exam to online. But for the Mass Kangaroo 2021, it's actually open for registration already. And you can choose for on-site or online. So I already put the website link on the chat box, I think, or in the down below. And then you can go into the website and select your uh, closest uh, zip code if you prefer on site, or you can choose the online option. And don't forget to select your kid's current grade as they will put into your uh, right level and give your kids put into right level for uh, when they receiving the scores. So as you might can see, the mass can grow open all the way from level one, open for um, grade one, all the way to grade 12. And actually, each two levels will have the same test. So for example, uh, level one, level two, they're actually receiving the same test paper. So you might go into say, oh, how is my uh, first grader competing with second grader? Uh, of course, some of the knowledge level and some of the testing skills are different. But don't worry, the Mass Kangaroo actually putting the kids, when they're receiving the uh, score and rank, they will put their into their own rank. So even uh, they're competing with second grader or they're using the same test paper, but then uh, once you receive uh, the rewards or counting the rank, that will put into your own grade. Um, as I mentioned, they have seven uh, exams and seven grades, and all the math can grow exam is 75 minutes. This is a very, very long exam, and particularly for uh, level one, two, three, four, they have 24 questions in 75 minutes. And for grade five and above, it will be 30 questions for all the students in 75 minutes. 
And the structure for math can grow as that you will have uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.5. Normally, it's 888 as for the distribution. So with the 24 question, you will have the first eight questions and receiving three points, uh, and nine all the way to 16 that's receiving to four points, and 16 and above to 25, uh, 24, you will have the 0.5 scores. And then they add your score up and put you into the rank. And with the grade five and above, they have more uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 questions and adding with the 0.5. And conclusion is that for the 30 questions for grade uh, 5 and above, your full mark is uh, 100 points. And with grade 1 all the way to grade 4, your uh, test score is about uh, 96 as your full marks. So why is Math Kangaroo super fun? As you can see on the left, you're going to see a lot of fun graphs and very interacting graphs and colors. And their questions are actually a really great um, math learning resources as they're really not only focusing on individual modules like just calculation or just word problems. They actually trick the kids to think. And in the math kangaroo, unfortunately, you cannot bring calculator and they will give you only pencils and scratch paper. So they will ask the kids maybe folding the paper or turning the test paper upside around and to observe some patterns and do the calculation themselves. And with the math can grow, as you can say, they're super, super fun, but they're also very challenging. Why? I would say that they're challenging in three points. So first, this is super long exam, particularly for younger kids. This is a 75 minutes exam, and many of my parents already observed, told me that um, it's 75 minutes and my kid come out like 30, 30 minutes. And particularly this year, they just did it online. So my kids opened up the computer and did a question in 20 minutes and handed it in. So because the students are in a younger grade and first they don't have that patience of sitting there for the full 75 minutes. And the parents are often asking why they're not double checking. So because they don't have to think or they don't even know how to double check, so for them it's very, very hard to sit through all the 75 minutes. And also in Math Kangaroo, they often have some tricky questions. Um, they are asking the question in a different way or uh, to front to the back and back to the front and all the other ways and with the graphs and you have a lot of word problems. So for the students, some of them particularly four-point questions. They're easy, but their knowledge point a little bit tricky. With the five-point questions, all the questions are maybe extended your current grade level's knowledge. And also in Math Kangaroo, it will encounter various modules. As I mentioned, and they're not only just testing your calculation, they might mixing that calculation into different modules. And they might uh, put in geometry into different modules. And they were asking for your imagination, your space viewing, and all the around. So as for all the students, not only you have to have the basic or fundamental math skills for uh, trying this competition, and also is that you need to really fully understand it and how you can mix it around and really apply. Okay, and for students who are actually in our current long term as, as well as in basic math, we're actually training them uh, from the basic math skill all the way of viewing them in a different point of view. So uh, our goal is that you need to able to apply it on yourself, but not only just uh, do calculation and only need to know certain questions. So as I mentioned, uh, Math Kangaroo is a super great math resources for students to open up the eye and really fully applying the math as well as loving the math. Okay, how about let's take a look at some of the sample questions and uh, fully dip into it on how the math kangaroo uh, is really testing what kind of skill that they're really testing student on. So as for this question, this is uh, 2016 level one, two, um, point three questions. So. Uh, this is for grade one and grade two students. The difficulty part here is what shape can we make using 10 cubes? So with grade one and grade two, many of the students may say this is super easy. But 
I often have students really had trouble on viewing the three, ooh, viewing the three dimensional shapes. So as students, and particularly younger kids, they cannot really see the cube that are hiding, for example, like here. They cannot really see that cube that is hiding and all the cubes they are hiding in the back. So with the cube hiding and they cannot fully finding all of the cube together and they are often making mistakes on this part. Also, uh, one of the fun games that we can train at home or um, when we do it at home is that you can use Legos. And I found that this is super, super fun. It's that you build Legos and you put it on your dining table. And you can ask the, the kids to view it on one direction. How many cubes are there? And then walk around your dining table and then view it from different perspective. Then students know, oh, there are some cubes are hiding and they can have building that three-dimensional uh, view and the space imagination. And because, of course, it, at an exam, you cannot walk around, you don't have that physical cube or you don't have that physical object. But then by viewing them, they can know, okay, my cube is not floating. There's something hiding underneath. And as long as you know that, or you can use another method is that uh, thinking about living on a tall apartment building. There's always someone underneath you. If you're on the top floor, for example, here, if I'm viewing from this column, it has uh, how many cubes? We are living on the top floor. There are three cubes underneath. And you cannot have empty cubes because otherwise you will drop down. And also, this is also testing the student with the counting skill is that you need to count in order. And some students often just count one by one and they miss one cube or they cannot find all of them. So it is very important we having the student first developing their um, point of view as well as the counting skill as for count in order. When I say order, is that either from left to right, top to down, or from the size, from the smallest to the biggest. So they need to able to put them into different category and count them one by one. So this is super, super hard, as maybe, maybe some of the parents are like, I don't understand why the kids don't get it. But then, believe me, this is super, super hard, particularly right now for grade one, even some of the grade two students, they're only viewing plain objects. They have not having that uh, uh, space imagination developed yet to viewing the three-dimensional shape. So it's very fun if you can do that at home with the dining table exercise or ask the student to build it a different shape and ask them. Okay, um, also let's take a look at the other one. So here, this is another question. This is a four points, still level one and two fitting for a first grader and second grader. But this one is particularly a word problem. With the word problem, uh, right now, I think, as for a first grader and second grader, they do have the ability to read a simple sentence or a simple word problem, but they don't know how to process the information process. They don't know how to process that information. And, uh, or many of the kids uh, have not come in math problem in English, and they often learn the math in Chinese, or parents taught them in Chinese. Therefore, uh, once they get a, um, math questions in English, they're often having hard times of processing those information as for, oh, how should I tackle this? What is this question asking? So here, I think we can also read the question super carefully. We read it one by one. Uh, Granny went out to the yard and caught all the hams and her cat. All 20 legs ran to her and how many ham does the granny have? So there are several difficulties here. First, if the kids really don't know English and they often don't know what ham is. They may know the chicken, the chickless, and they don't know what ham is. So uh, this will be one of the testing points as what this is ham is chicken. So chicken has two legs. And making sure you can ask your kids how many legs for chicken. And 
they, they might give you a different answer. So uh, don't hold that surprise. And also with the cats, also ask the cat, how many legs for one cat or one kitty? So we have four legs. Okay, excuse my ugly drawing, okay? But as we're here, we need to able to process this information. And then right now we know it has all 20 legs ran into her. So this might be a very typical chicken and rabbit problem and parents are like, oh, this is, we can use X, Y, and that's for higher grade. How can I using a simple, simple knowledge to convey my first grader or teach my second grader on how to calculate how many legs? Okay, with the mass kangaroo, particularly when we're having 75 minutes, we can also just draw this out, simple as that. So and making them organized into the table. As for here, we can having the little cat. Okay, I'm drawing four legs representing cat, okay? And then we can have the chicken. When you ask how many leg, how many animals are here, then you can just list, list all of them out, number of animals. So if you have one cat, how many legs are there? For one cat, you will have four legs, right? Okay, and total we had how many? We had 20. Therefore, we, for the, all the other legs are belong to the ham. So we will have about 20 minus four, which is 16. And each of them has two. So 16 divided by two give us eight. So as for, you can see here for first grader and second grader. So I need to first able to process this information and put them organized and put them into table. And they need to know how to read this table or how to construct a table, which is, this is another hard testing point. And also with the first grader, I need to understand a little bit about uh, simple calculation. Uh, maybe here you would say 2 times A equals 16, which is super easy, but then when they go into the opposite way for division, 16 divided by 2 equals the 8, which is super, super, super hard already. And another tricky part here is that many of, many of the kids will go the opposite way. So they will put chicken on the top first and rabbit on the bottom. But then, then you will see if I have two uh, hams and uh, all the rest for uh chicken that also works, but then we don't have that answer here. So let them try, and then even you can draw all of them out. So list all the animals, let them draw all of them. So all the rest, and, and then counting all of the legs to see how many total legs are here. So with the younger kids, it's very, very important at the stage that uh, particularly right now, even in my third graders class, in the long-term class, that we ask the student to draw all of the line graph, to draw all of them out, because they don't understand why is there's a relationship going on, and which one's heavier, which one's lighter, and how we can transform the line from uh, using all of the questions and to represent in the line segment graph. So it's very important uh, for the parents to ask the student to draw, and even uh, they can draw on a whiteboard. Right now they really love drawing, so please ask them to draw them all of them out and help them visualize and do the calculation. Okay, how about let's look at one more harder question here. And so this is a uh, level three, four, uh, four points and above question. As you can see here, this is a number nine. So by the rules, it's mainly almost their um, four point question for level three, four, which is on to uh, third graders and fourth graders. And here uh, we have pinned three photos in a row on a court board using eight pins. And Peter want to pin up to seven photos in the same way. How many pins? Uh, does he need? So uh, we solved this exact same questions uh, when we're learning arithmetic sequence all the way back uh, in third grader. But for many of students, actually we started using one photos. So one photo, you will have how many pin? We'll use up to four pin. And then one photo, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm going to list it up here. 
number of photo. So if you use one photo and we'll have four pins, how about two photo? And now we keep drawing them out. As you can see, when you adding this, two of the point here is actually, I'm going to change the color, actually overlapping. The two pins in the middle, they're sharing. So here you'll only have six. But how did we get six? It was using four pins for each times two, but minus one interval. So one sec. And then you will get that six pin. And then you can keep listing down all of them, but then uh, with the students, you do have enough time of drawing all of them out. And I do have students sitting there drawing all seven photos, which is great, great, great. And we can also using listing all the numbers. But when you start listing, you will start finding this is an arithmetic sequence and all of them increasing by two. Okay, as for here, with the similar question, we also had a 0.5 hanging uh, hanging the shirt. So particularly does it apply within the same rule. But as you can see, what is the difference between uh, first grader and second grader uh, and level three and level four is that the information process with the word problem, it gets longer. So you will have much more longer word problem for the student to read and they need to able to process all those information into math and they need to able to finding the, the necessary information for them to solving this problem. Okay, as I also said here in Math and Guru, um, not only they're involving calculation, not only they're having word problem, that we also have different modules and categories. And uh, we put uh, the past 20 years of almost past 20 of years, all of the questions into different modules. As you can see, for level one, two, we have the distribution and calculation, geometry, word problem, and combinatorics. So they need to able to tackle all of those problems by uh, applying, adding with the calculation. So level three, four, and level five, six, you can see um, the distribution changes and particularly in level three, four, you're having much more information and also involving number theories, which is a very advanced topics, particularly for third graders and fourth grader. And, and overall, three particular modules stands out, calculation, geometry, and word problem. And calculation, not just physical two times six, uh, easy to, divisions. But then with all those three important modules that um, that actually got mixed up together. So it's very important, as I mentioned before, Math Kangaroo is a fun, but very math ap um, applicating uh, exam. So you need to able to really know those knowledge as well as need to know how to apply them in the Math Kangaroo. Okay, so some testing tips or how we can really success in Math Kangaroo. Uh, math Kangaroo still are still very, very great math learning resources. And because it's testing a lot of knowledges and a lot of modules. So first, I'm asking for calculation. As calculation is the key. And many of you do say uh, we do a lot of calculation at home and the kids can do uh, up to four digit calculation, but can they really apply? And also can they do the smart calculation? So what do I mean by smart calculation? They need to able to combine finding the factors and also able to go uh, the opposite way and as well as moving, uh, moving the number within the sign together and be able to do calculation. And uh, all those based on actually the regular calculation and then able to apply for the smart calculation. And also one of the most important thing in math can grow is that you need to learn how to summary. What do I mean by summary is that right now in our WeChat groups, uh, we actually did a math can grow daily challenge and uh, with all those past year test questions. So many parents are keep uh, 
that they have a lot of problems with the students because uh, they're struggling particularly on four points and five points questions or some of them having some troubles in the three point question. But then uh, as I can see some of the questions that are having a repeating pattern. So maybe the kids are really struggling on the geometry module and the kids are really, really struggling on the one of the war problem or arithmetic sequence or some of the particular knowledge. But that's how why we want to summary is that uh, not only they need to do all the uh, past tests that really help you to familiarize with uh, the structures as well as the language of that test, but also it's very important. This is the time that we are picking up what kind of knowledge the the kids need to pay more attention to, and maybe they are just uh, need to having that knowledge. And some parents are say, uh, my kids are a little careless and they can't do that calculation. Okay, I did a past webinar before on how to cure uh, carelessness because we do believe uh, that carelessness is one of the excuse as because the kids in the deep down, they don't um, get that knowledge yet. So learn to summary and uh, if you're already participating in those uh, Mass Kangaroo Challenge, super great. Or if you already uh, asked the kids done those past year tests, which is super awesome, but able to summarize, which is picking up all those wrong questions you kids did and put them into categories. Is this a word problem? Is this a geometry question? And what kind of the knowledge point the kids is talking about? So if you do have any questions, you can reach out to one of the Think Academy teachers and we are super, super happy to help you and solving that problems. And uh, the second key part is developing good testing skills. Um, this is a super long exam, a 75 minutes as I mentioned. And uh, I would say a lot of my kids didn't even survive the first 30 minutes. They were handing the paper within the 30 minutes and call it done. So, uh, or even some of the kids cannot even sit that long. Uh, I do think right now it's a little bit easier because we have uh, been studying at home, doing online settings. So it is easier for students to sit a longer time in front of a uh, computer. But then also they need to build out that patience. Many of the kids looking at a longer war problem, they just give up and they, they're not even processing those information. So we can start from the simple one, ask them to read out loud, and then also uh, developing the double check skills. What do I mean by double check? I, to be honest with you, uh, even in my long-term courses, when I ask the student to double check, they will just cling through the paper and they will tell you I'm done. Okay, so when I say double check is that asking a student to redo those questions one more time on a paper, not just going through and glancing through all the questions, but actually writing them down one more time. Maybe it's very struggling, um, super, super struggling in the very beginning, but then uh, later on it actually builds up and uh, in the beginning, mean parents also need to give a little bit more patience. And also right now, um, uh, trying to shrink the time that you help your kids to check the work because uh, in the beginning of my uh, uh, last year, my parents are saying, oh, I'm still double checking the work for my kids. But then then the kids will having that uh, the sense of, oh, my mom always check it for me. My dad always check it for me, but they don't have that sense of checking the work themselves. So ask the kids to do this maybe one question at a time. That would be a success as well. Also, recircle and draw is very important because uh, we have a lot of information in the test. So it's very important for the student to circle out the important uh, numbers as well as the information. In the beginning, you will see them circling all of the all of the word, but then you can ask the kids to pick up um, the important word, like how many chicken are there, how many legs are there. So when you ask, and they will actually look at the question, and they will tell you the answer, which is helping them to process those important information as well. And then uh, learn how to approach the question with all different uh, math exams here, uh, math league, math uh, B stars, math kangaroo, MC8, and all those tests on the market that have their own, I would say, the language or the style of the question. So for you, uh, doing all the past year questions uh, really help the students to be familiarized with 
how the structure is, how they are really reading that question. So uh, doing those uh, real testing questions, super, super helpful. And I'll also put those link on the chat box already or in the down comment box already. So you can just go onto their website and they have uh, the past testing paper, or you can join our WeChat. We are doing the Mass Kangaroo uh, Challenge and we are happy to provide those resources. And how we can prepare for Mass Kangaroo. Uh, Mass Kangaroo is a once a year exam. And right now, the 2021 is still in the upcoming March, and we have about five months to go. And uh, I do have parents ask us super early because we started the sign up in early September. So um, how we can prepare right now, we have about five months. So as for this month all the way to November, first remember to sign up your exam. And then is that practice your calculation. And we do have calculation based in math in next month, uh, fully just doing the calculation. So uh, many parents will just say, um, I can teach the calculation at home. But then sometimes it's the, the back end is why are we regrouping? Why are we doing the carryover? So it's really, really helpful that you building that strong calculation skill and then advance into the smart calculation, as I mentioned, to increase the accuracy. Also, right now, you can start to practicing some point three uh, questions in the group chats, or you can find those questions online. Just doing the first eight questions, those are normally the three point questions. And you will also find those answers accordingly on their official website as well. Also, summarize the mistakes, uh, putting, pull through all those mistake questions or the struggle questions together. And parents can help the kids to analyze what are the modules that my kids still need to learn a little bit more or get more clarifications. And moving into December to January, the, the holiday seasons, holiday seasons where uh, maybe the kids don't have that much time. So you can practice by those modules that you pull through. Or if you don't know how to uh, summary or summarize those modules, of course, we're here to help as well. Uh, we're going to have a mass kangaroo short term classes coming soon in December. Uh, we help you to tackle all those modules as well as how we can read those questions in different modules with those uh, testing skill. Also, um, the real test problem also super helpful and reading skill is super important. As you see in the past examples, uh, grade one, grade two need to read at least three sentences for a problem by themselves when they're doing the test. And then uh, third graders and fourth graders need to uh, read about four to five little paragraph word problems and process uh, the word problem information. So reading skills is also important. And if you do teach your kids math in Chinese, I strongly suggest you uh, do uh, practice a little bit more in English to help them understand or learn the math concept in English. Also practicing writing down steps in the beginning, that would be a pain, but it really helps. So ask them to slowly writing down the steps and let them process those information themselves. It's really, really helpful. And in the next year, January, February, and March, when we're working towards into uh, preparing really uh, for the exams. So you want to redo all the questions that the kids did mistakes on um, and focusing on the higher points, so point four and point five. So with those more trickier questions and really be flexible and to see how the kids can, uh, can apply them. And uh, towards the end or towards the early March, you can try one exam every week and also uh, using the same exact style. So 75 minutes as the student, no calculator and in a quiet setting to do the test themselves. And I do think it's a fun exam, but it can get very competitive. Um, but I do think all the kids have the potential and really enjoy the math through the math kangaroo exam. So some of the resources we have, as I mentioned, with the official website. On the, if you go onto the website on the left panel, you will see all the practice questions and you can purchase the past exams uh, with all the um, answer key that's also online as well. 
And with basic math, we do help you. And if you are in long term and in our basic math, we are already uh, building those foundations or helping you to build those foundations um, to uh, really focusing on uh, not focusing not only just math can guru, but overall in the math logic and the math skills. And if you do need help organizing uh, math kangaroo modules, we do have the short-term classes coming soon in December. And um, please stay tuned in the Think Academy YouTube or our Facebook or if you're on WeChat or on Telegram. So uh, don't be afraid or don't hesitate in asking us any questions and we're really, really helpful to uh, answer any of your questions. So in uh, basic math November, we're only just focusing on calculation. So that fits, uh, those are the private school, um, the calculation point that all the kids should be having that graphs on. Um, so if you do need help with calculation, I strongly encourage you sign up and practicing and starting to understand all the position values as well as tackling moving on to smart calculation. And of course, if you do like our YouTube, and in our YouTube, we have the 2019 Math Can Guru uh, chapters. So you can go into our video list and subscribe us and turn on the little bell and give me a thumbs up if you do like us. Or if you have any other resources or competition or videos that you want us to share the information, please uh, comment and let us know. Okay, and this is my uh, WeChat QR code. If you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to reach out to me. And I'm really help, uh, happy to provide more information. Okay, so that be all for today's webinar. Hopefully, all the kids can enjoy math and really, really uh, having the fun and finding math kangaroo fun in the upcoming year. Okay, if you have any question, let me know and subscribe us and give us some stuff. Thank you for joining me tonight, and I will see you guys soon in the upcoming webinar. Okay, bye. I will share the link for Think Academy Telegram, of course.